So very good morning to you all. And today the, the purpose of our meeting is to not to do anything new, but just carry on what we did yesterday. And if you remember yesterday, we had some discussion about this uh, debt tax sheet. So basically we were locking horns with these great scholars, uh, Modigliani and Miller. They were saying that uh, financing is absolutely useless. <laughs> well, I'm sounding a bit cynical that financing does not make any change to the company's value. And we were challenging them that no, it does. It could be possible that under their assumptions, which are very, uh, very heroic, very fanciful assumptions, they may be right. But in the reality, uh, it's not true. Financing make a lot of impact. Of course, your main uh, value generator are your assets. No doubt about it. I'm not contesting it. I fully agree with that. But we must also acknowledge that you can alter the company's values through the debt tax shield. So tax and the debt. Basically debt, tax comes automatically in the picture. But the debt or the leverage is something which can make a change in the value of the company. You with me? So for instance, and today I will only do what uh, I said yesterday, and I'll give you more evidences of it. So I'll still stick with Finnair company. And if you remember, we studied yesterday that uh, and I think this, this was also mentioned in one of the slides. Maybe I should open the slides also so that you can. Uh, where is that? Ah, oh, here we go. I quickly share a file with you so that we, we know what we're talking about. It was uh, leverage and from valuation. So yesterday, um, Sorry, folks, I'm just trying to open the file. Yeah, this one. So yesterday, we were discussing that the value of a levered company uh, is equal to the value of unlevered company and plus the present value of tax shield. Uh, Modigliani and Miller were saying that this part is missing. It doesn't exist. So basically, uh, hypothetically, if there is no tax shield, then the value of levered and unlevered company is same. In other words, leverage play no role. In other words, the capital structure play no role. In other words, financing plays no role. In other words, the liability side of the balance sheet is sleeping play no role in the company's value. So if you see the, all these things are very much connected, there's like a knock-on linkage between them. So you hit one, the other gets also tossed. So that's what we, I'm, I'm trying to establish that no, it's not true. The present value of tax shield is a, is a very big thing, okay? So we need to keep this thing in mind as well. That the tax sheet is very important. And I think I gave you one example of uh, Finnair yesterday, one year, but I'll study more years today. And I will tell you how you can get the data of the company by yourself and try to calculate the tax shield thing. All right, this is something I wanted to discuss, but actually I can copy and paste in the new spreadsheet just in case you have to check it again. So now I, uh, I open a blank spreadsheet. No, no harm. Mm, it works. Does it work? I think it works. Yeah. Why not? 
and uh, I can share this one with you. This, yeah, here we go. All right. So here, I this is a spreadsheet which I'll be working on, but I would first take you to the to the Finnair's values. So what we get here, this is 2019 and 18, so I can get two years data. And here you can see that uh, Finnair has paid 18.4 million. I, can you see it actually, or should I zoom in? Mm. Okay. So here in the income statement of Finnair, you can see that the profit before taxes uh, has been 93 million in 2019. So if I need to uh, write it down on a, on a board, I would say 2019 and 18. So 2019, uh, the profit before tax or the earnings before tax, what you call what you call as a PBT or EBT, or even the gross profit, uh, has been 93 million in 2019, and in 2018, it was 127.2 million euros. So this is the EBT, the earnings before tax, right? Same way, if you look at the corporate income tax in 2019, it was 18.4 because the company is paying it, so they put minus sign, okay? So because they, they pay, it's a cash outflow, hence they put negative sign, but I will not put negative sign, otherwise the interpretation would be so awkward. So I, I know tax, the money goes out, so why should I put negative sign? Uh, so I put here uh, corporate tax, Corporate income tax, you can call it. For 2019, it is 18.4. Whereas for 2018, it was 25.6 million euros. Okay, so the first data I get is that, now I take you back to the spreadsheet. This is quite a nuisance because you have to change your. So, so what I what data I got that for 2019 and 2018, we have Profit before tax or EBT or whatever is 93 and they are in millions. So I'm not writing anywhere, but all these numbers are in million. Absolute numbers are in million euros. Uh, otherwise, if there's a percentage, it's a percentage. So it's 127.2. And then we have the corporate tax. It has been 18.4 and 25.6. And if you need to find the effective, effective corporate tax rate, And this is, my apologies if I could make some mistake about spelling, so. And this is how we go. Okay. So if I change it to percentage. Um, so therefore, 
Finnair, Finnair has paid 19.875 percentage uh, in 2019. Uh, so the, out of total profit, 19.75 uh, they paid in 2019, whereas in 2018 they, they paid 20.126 percentage. Okay, so this is the effective corporate tax rate. And we need two more things. We need to find the total debt of Finnair. And I can tell you that the total debt of a company uh, is equal to the current debt and the non-current debt. Non-current uh, now again, for the, to find this, we need to go back to the balance sheet, the financial statement. So I, I share another file with you now. Uh, let's go back to the financial statement. But this time, we need to go away from income statement and go to the balance sheet of the Finnair. Here we go. Here are the liabilities on this side here. Yeah. Okay. So we have the non current liabilities let's first look at the current liabilities because that's the way i wrote uh, there are uh, lease liabilities uh, they borrow something uh, trade payables are not financial liabilities we only need to look at the financial liabilities and and these are um, The total debt, if I can say so, the financial debt of the company is um, 140 plus 43.5. Uh, yeah, so 140 plus 43.5. So we need to find out, remember each company, they, uh, in some companies they gave straight away their total debt, the finance debt. I think the finance debt, total debt, uh, interest bearing liabilities and these lease because you, you borrow and then you with that you buy, you have to pay interest. Uh, so these are some of the financial liabilities you need to keep in mind. So here I, I, I see two uh, liabilities where the company has to pay interest. And these are lease liabilities and the other interest bearing liabilities. So if I add them up, uh, I get 140.4, plus 43.5, when I add it up, it becomes 183.9. 183.9, but it should be in the current liabilities, uh, current debt. So the current debt is right here. Current debt is 183.9 for 2019. And for 2018, it is 125.1 and 100.5. So if you add it up, it becomes 225.6. 225.6. And 225.6 is the current liability of the previous year, 2018, right? Make sense? And then we go to the non-current liabilities. And we see that the lease liabilities are this. And uh, so again, we basically add the same thing. So for 2019, I add 913.6 and 477.3. So if I add it up, I get... Uh, 10, 2, 7, 9, 13. So this is 1390. So when I add these two numbers, I get 1390.9. And when I add these two numbers last year, it becomes uh, 8, 4, 8451, 1548. This is the, the non-current debt. So now we have got all the requirements to 
check the total uh, debt of Finnair. And now I, because I have this data on the board, I can take you back to the Excel, okay? Uh, yes? Well, in, in this case, look at uh, the type of debt dif differ from company to company. But in this case, it appears that they have the, the, the debt on which they pay interest is of two types. Uh, in each of the block, current and non-current, they have the lease. Lease is that you borrow something and then you have to pay it back, so you pay interest on it. Uh, and the other debt is that you borrow from the bank and you pay it. So basically that's the, I, I could find only two. Uh, components. You have the deferred, remember, remember, be careful, be very careful. Debt is a liability, but not every liability is a debt. Be careful. Debt is a liability, but liabilities are not merely confined to debt. If I, if I run the company and I owe, owe to my supplier, I, I took some stuff, raw material last month, I haven't paid him yet. Make sense? That's not my debt, basically. It's my operational liability. If you are my employees and I haven't, I haven't paid you wages for the last month, you are my liability, but you're not my debt. <laughs> so be careful that you need to distinguish. You need to extract financial debt from the block of liabilities. In this case, uh, there are two elements, but the company which you pick, maybe there are different elements, who knows? So rather than memorizing, the, oh, okay, Shab said that only add this value and this value. Okay, this is true for all the companies in the world. No, it doesn't work like this. You need to distinguish, you need to find out, and run your mind that is, it, is this thing, is this item coming in the definition of financial debt or not. So as long as you remember that debt is a liability, but not all liabilities are debt, it keeps you on track. Anyways, now we got the information. Let's go back to spreadsheet. Uh, where are we? Ah, here we go. So now our current debt of 2019 is 183.9, 183.9, and the current debt for the last year, 18, is 225.6. Remember, two, 2020 is ongoing. So I, I, I would say the current year is 2019, not 20. It's a calendar year, but we don't have the data yet because the year is not over. <laughs> of course, you can have the quarterly statements, but I'm not using them. And then it goes to 225.6. And the non-current is 1390.9. Last year is 1548.5148. And then the total debt is the sum of this. Uh, these two numbers. There we go. So now we have basically all the elements to calculate the debt tax shield. And what is the formula of calculating of tax shield, the, the debt tax shield? Uh, the debt tax shield, if you remember yesterday's uh, lecture or the videos you can watch or the slides you can see, it's equal to the effective corporate tax multiply by the debt, total debt. And here, our total debt is this, capital D, and our effective corporate tax, not rat, rate, is uh, TC, is this, here we go. So we have basically everything to find out. Mm -hmm. So if I multiply them, uh, remember, all these numbers are in million euros unless they are separated by percentage sign, okay? So I'm not writing every time, but they all are million euros, okay? Um, so what we do here, we multiply TC with 
with D and we get this. So in 2019, 311.5733 whatever million euros have been added by debt to the Finnair's value. And the last year, 357 point something million have been added by uh, debt to the Finnair's total value, the book value of the company. All right. Now, we can be interested that if we want to split the value of Finnair into levered and unlevered, yeah, component, like look at the first sentence here. The value of the firm is equal to value of unlevered company plus the present value of debt tax shield, right? Now, let's find the value of Finnair. The value of Finnair of the company, uh, and then I write the, well, so this value of Finnair, this is the, let me, rephrase it the value of finnair basically is the levered value levered levered means with debt levered value and then we write down the unlevered value of finnair right now to find the value of finnair which is the actual realistic which is the levered we need to look at the total of assets value in the balance sheet the total of assets remember you can either see total of assets or you can see the total of liabilities plus equity same thing because assets are equal to liabilities plus equity so it doesn't matter so much quicker way is to find the value of total assets that's it so I once again go back to the balance sheet. I share the screen with you and see uh, how much are total assets of Finnair. So you can see here uh, the current assets and the non-current assets and when you add them up, uh, it comes to be 3877.9. So this is the total value of assets, 38. Uh, 7.99 and this is the book value of Finnair, accounting value of Finnair, historic value of Finnair, all these phrases. So what is the book value of uh, Finnair? Uh, this is the 3877.9 for 2019 and last year 2018 it was 3943.6. 3943.6. And I can also show you that 3877.9 is actually equal to the value of total liabilities. Look, equity plus liabilities is 3877.9. So the, this is the same. So it shows that assets are equal to liabilities plus equity. This is the beauty of finance. You study a concept and you can see in the reality. Is it, mostly it's a match, nice match. Okay, so now we have basically everything. So I go back to the spreadsheet. To the, and the value of Finnair, the levered value of Finnair is 3877.9. million in 2019 and 3943.6 in 2018. And how do you find the unlevered value? Look at the formula, the value of the firm. This is the value of the firm value of the firm is equal to value of unlevered company plus the present value of tax shield. Well, the present value doesn't, uh, I, I can bring this idea of present value as well, but let's keep it for some time. Let's only look at the tax shield, okay? 
So what I do here, um, the value of levered company minus debt tax shield is this. So in other words, you can split the total value of the company, like, in, like here, the value of the firm is equal to value of unlevered component and plus the value coming from debt tax shield. So you can see here is that the total value of the company could be split between uh, this and this. Ah, sorry, this, yeah. The unlevered value of the company, basically try to understand now, it's very important to listen. The value, unlevered value of Finnair basically means that if Finnair had no debt at all, zero debt, its book value would have been this much. But because Finnair has debt and the book value of Finnair is this much, which is higher the levered value is more than the unlevered value. And why does the levered value is more than the unlevered value? Because the debt is bringing something additional to the company. The debt is bringing value to the company. So this is why we can openly challenge uh, Modigliani and Miller with this example. <laughs> yeah, so the debt changes the value. Here we go. So this is, uh, I, I would be, I'm not sure if I have the similar spreadsheet, but I will check it. If I don't have, I would be posting it in uh, Optima for you so that you can refer to it. Questions, comments? Hmm? Uh, you can bring in the concept of uh, present value also. The present value is that present value is always more important than the future value. So if I if I give you a choice, that would you like to have a euro today or uh, in two years time? What would you prefer? No, 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 no. The, the, don't complicate it. Keep, keep it very simple. You we just meet in the street, and I give you a choice. Uh, my friend, would you like to have euro now or after two years? What would you say? No, a bird in hand is worth two in the bushes. The only thing which can make your decision uh, is now we come to that point that do I pay you compensation for waiting? What is interest by the way? Interest is a compensation uh, for your waiting period, isn't it? <laughs> I don't give you today, I give you after five years. Hey, I have to give you some compensation. And that is the interest, isn't it? Well, of course, we can define uh, interest in a, in a many way, but this is a very layman's way of uh, defining interest. That interest is a compensation given to the lender because he or she has to wait. And also he and she has to take a risk. Because now I'm offering you one euro. I'm in front of you. Euro is in front of you. Take it. End of the story. But what if I disappear after two years? <laughs> I don't give. Or I don't, okay, I don't disappear. I say, oh, I don't even know you. Who are you, Fabio? So that can happen, isn't it? So there is a compensation. Okay, so that is why we bring this element of uh, interest into it, the present value of it. Now imagine, so if I, if I rewrite this uh, and I say, okay, I say, the present value of debt tax shield. Present value, yeah. Value. And just imagine that the risk free rate, risk free rate in Finland is uh, 1%. Oh. 
And just imagine that uh, this is the current year, let's say, uh, and this is the next year, 2019. Then this value should be actually equal to one plus one percent sorry one plus one percent ah it should be equal to first one plus this here we go this is how you can find the present value. Okay. Remember, I uh, just noticed without tax shield, uh, sorry, without this present value and the interest rate stuff, the value was 1390, 1390.9. Um, sorry, I think I did silly thing. It shouldn't be here. It should be uh, present value of debt. Ah, this should be. Ah, this should be discounted. So present value of debt tax shield. And please remember this value. How much is this? Three one one. Now I'm trying to make a story out of it. Three, three, one, one. I'm deliberately. Last year, I gave you choice. Hey, my friends, I have borrowed 311 euros from you. Take it now or take it next year. And you say, have no worries, we trust you. Uh, let's take it next year. And I agree with you and I say, okay, fine. I will pay you 311, but next year, okay? Deal done, no hard feelings. You yourself said, Shab, to 311 euros, next year. But see the reality now. The reality is that one plus. The reality is that the 311 euros which I give you, they are worth 308 euros actually. Because I'm not paying you interest and because of inflation or whatever reasons. If I had given you 311 last year in 2018, 311 worth equal to 311, simple. But now, even though I still give you 311 euros in notes, but their value is equal to 308 euros of last year. So this is the idea of present value. You may ignore it or you may take it, it's up to you. Because we're not making many years into our analysis. So it will not matter much, but if you want to take it, then let's take it, no problem. So the idea of present value is based on uh, this very famous saying of those elderly people in the villages that, um, you know, these people who are in the elderly people, not very educated, even they have no education, they haven't gone to universities, but they're very wise people. When I go to India, whenever I get a chance to sit in the company of those elderly people in the 70s, 80s, I spend some time with them because they will tell you something very wise, which all these universities and everything will never be able to find. And what they said, a bird in hand is worth two in the bushes. Look at this proverb. So don't get too much attracted by doubling or multiplying thing, which you haven't seen. So basically don't live on the false promises. If it is less, but tangible, available, take it. 
So this is the idea that the bird in hand is worth two in the bushes or on the tree. And this is what happened. I promised you I'll give you 311. I fulfill my promise. I give you 311, but not the, in the current year, but the next year. But the problem is that because of inflation and all that stuff, your 311 uh, are worth 308. It means that basically by showing your generosity, you have lost three euros in this whole deal, in this whole process. Maybe you're not even aware because I'm still giving you 311. You see, last year, I would have counted one, two, three, 311 euros pick. Even now I'm giving you 311 euros. But the market value or the store value, if you go and buy some shopping from some store, uh, that's worth 308 of last year. So that is the idea of the present value in, in simple terms. But anyways, that's everything for today. And this, uh, I think this spreadsheet is not there, but I would share it with you in Optima. But now you understand it, that there is a value of the company and you can split the value into, see, in 99.999 percentage of companies in the world, the book value is the realistic value and book value includes the debt also, debt value also. So, so there is a leverage. So basically when you see the total balance sheet, total assets, the book value, that is a levered value of the company. But in finance, we rely a lot on what if this happens? What if that happens? And if we assume that, what if there's no debt taken by the company? What would have been its value? And that value is this. Yeah. Whereas Modigliani and Miller were saying that, hey, debt or no debt, there should be no difference between, there should be no difference between this value and this value. They should be same. The truth is that, or the fact is that it's not same. Thanks to the value created by the debt. Okay. So that's my, uh, the, the, the crux of the whole message that we are able to prove uh, two legendary scholars wrong. But next time when we meet, we try to prove them right again. Yes, I'm very respectful to them. So here there is a climax in the story. But next week there'll be anticlimax, and I would prove them right again. So that's it for today. Thank you very much. And participation. And I wish you a very lovely, relaxing, and safe weekend.